All right, welcome to take two of lesson 2-1, which is conditional statements. So we've been doing P implies Q, which is the original. P implies Q. The converse is, we switch them, so it's Q implies P. And the inverse is going to be not P implies not Q. And the contrapositive is going to be not Q implies not P. Then we talked about the two truth values, and we said that the original and the contrapositive have the same truth values, and then the converse and inverse have the same truth values. So let's go to, from the original, let's just talk about the contrapositive. So we're going to put not Q. So if the air temperature is not 32 degrees or less, then the snow is not falling. The converse of this statement is going, so let's just go to the converse. So air temperature, air temp is 32 or less. then snow is falling. Okay, so if the air temperature is 32 or less, then snow is falling. The inverse is going to be if we put a not in here. I think that's what I did for the contrapositive. I think I said that backwards. So if not P, if it is not, if snow is not falling, So not falling, then the air temperature is not 32 degrees or less. Then air temp not 32 degrees or less. All right, then the contrapositive, if air temp is not 32 degrees or less, then snow is not falling. All right, so the original, if snow is falling, then the air temperature is 32 degrees or less. That is true. Okay, so that's what the scientists say is true. So if the air temperature is 32 degrees or less, then the snow is falling. Does that always happen? So every time it is below 32 degrees, do we get snow? And that answer is false. So if the snow is not falling, then the air temperature is not 32 degrees or less. So just because it's not snowing, does that mean that it is not 32 degrees or less? And that again is a false truth value. So if the air temperature is not 32 degrees or less, then the snow is not falling. Okay, and that one is true. All right. So by conditional, now what does by conditional, what does that little prefix by mean? By means two statements, okay? And do you see how this if or only if is in here? And then we write that statement like this, P if and only if Q. So do you see how it's I, F, F, if there's two F's there? That is not a typo. So if you see that in any future things, that I, F, F, then it is okay. That's what it means, if and only if. Now what it means is it's two statements are true. The conditional statement and the converse is true. So if the conditional statement is true and the converse is true, all four of those statements are true. The inverse is true, the contrapositive is true. So a lot of times we say that that is true forward and back. And if you look here, do you see how we write it in shorthand? You see how the arrows are going both ways? Not just implies Q, but also implies P. So it goes both ways, forward and back. So to be a biconditional, it is true 
P implies Q, and it is also true when we do the converse. And really what we talk about a biconditional, this is going to come in a second or two here, this means it is a definition. A definition is a biconditional statement because it's true forward and back. So IFF, not a typo, it means if and only if. If and only if, not a typo. Out of biconditional is true when the conditional is true and the converse is true. And if the conditional is true, then the contrapositive is true. If the converse is true, then the inverse is true. So all four of them would be true. Okay, so determine if each biconditional is true, give false. So if you take negative 5 and square it, do you get 25? And now if you square it, y squared equals 25, do you get negative 5? So it's true both ways. You would get the negative 5. All right. Oh, and this one, but we also have a 5 that would work. So a counterexample would be false because it's not just that because it would be 5 and negative 5. So yes, it is true. If you take negative 5 and square it, you get 25. But now when you do it this way, y squared equals 25, do you only get negative 5? Nope. Because a 5 would also work. So this biconditional is false because the converse is not true. All right, what is a definition? A definition is a biconditional statement like I said before. So P implies Q is true, Q implies P is true. So it's true both ways. All right, so let's see if this could be a biconditional. If two lines intersect and they form a right angle, does that make perpendicular lines? So any take time you take two lines that intersect and they intersect at a right angle, does that make perpendicular lines? And the answer is true. So now let's do the converse. If intersecting, if lines intersect to make a right angle, then are they going to be perpendicular? And that is true. So perpendicular, it's true one way. If you have perpendicular lines, you have two lines that intersect to form a right angle, and it's true also the other way. If you have a right angle, two lines that intersect at a right angle, then they are going to be perpendicular lines. So that is the definition of perpendicular lines. That is a true biconditional statement. All right, so right here at the end, we just practiced writing all of our different terms here, and we talked about the truth values and getting the original and the contrapositives the same. And then we started talking about biconditionals and the if and only if. Okay, and that means that it is a definition. All right, you guys should be ready now to do your online 2-1 homework. So go to your big ideas and get started on 2-1.